Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm here to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. It is my number one mission to move the needle for you the fastest and easiest way possible when it comes to your overall health. Not just your hormone health, your overall health. Because although I know that healing is an endless journey, it's something that we are always gonna be working on, I also have a very deep desire to have you be functioning at your best capacity at all times during the day, and I'm convinced that there are certain tools that can get you there faster. Today, I wanna share one of those tools with you that I believe will move the needle faster for you. So let me shout from the rooftops how much I love the mineral magnesium. And more so, I love what magnesium does for our bodies on a daily basis when we have sufficient amounts of it. Fortunately, most of us are deficient in it. Let's talk about how we can improve that a little later on. So what it does when it is humming in our bodies, it improves energy, sleep, brain function, digestion, mood. It's a powerful self-care tool. Most importantly, it helps to keep blood sugar in check. It helps to keep our muscles happy, our metabolism humming, and it is critical for overall longevity. Magnesium is a mineral that our cells simply can't do without. This macro mineral is involved in over 600 chemical processes in the body. It helps to protect us from stressors. It keeps us calm. It's like the ultimate chill pill and it's a great sleep aid. This is all according to new research in the Journal of Nutrients. Now, recent research in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences also highlighted that magnesium role in the management of blood sugar, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. And what it really means is that when we can supplement with this key mineral, we can actually help individuals, which are millions and millions of women with prediabetes, type two diabetes, and those who are even just looking to keep their blood sugar levels stable throughout the day so that they keep their metabolism running, they don't ever run into a concern around prediabetes. Now, given how much our cells rely on magnesium every single day, it's no surprise our metabolic function needs this mineral to keep things in check as well. Magnesium appears to reduce fasting blood glucose levels and insulin resistance in people with type 2 diabetes or those who are at risk for developing it, according to a systemic review and metal analysis in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. And for anyone who has low levels of this mineral, boosting magnesium may offer better blood sugar control throughout the day. Now, I wanna quickly review really quick, and I know I've done this on a lot of other episodes, but how blood sugar is regulated in the body and then how magnesium actually comes in and helps to create a more stable blood sugar level across the day. So our bodies convert food and nutrients into blood glucose. And most importantly, these are foods that are carb driven that are gonna be converted into glucose. Even excessive amounts of protein can also be converted into glucose, but I rarely see that be the case. So when glucose hits the bloodstream from your green smoothie or your blueberries or the muffin you had, whatever it may be, the pancreas then releases insulin. Now, insulin is known as a fat storage hormone, and we're going to get to that in a second. But what insulin ends up doing is it signals our cells by binding to receptor sites on the cells to take in that glucose to be used as energy. Insulin also tells the liver to pack up some glucose away for later in the form of glycogen. And once our blood sugar levels go down as a result of the cells and liver taking in that glucose, the pancreas releases insulin at a much slower rate. A lower insulin level tells the liver to send out stored glycogen when the body needs more energy. Because again, glucose is the first line of energy that we make in the body. And then if we are down and we don't have enough sufficient amount of glucose, then we start to burn ketones or burn fat that turns into ketones that we use as energy over time. So just a heads up, that's how that works. Now, what does this have to do with magnesium? So magnesium plays an important role in glucose control and insulin metabolism through a number of mechanisms. Magnesium helps the body reduce insulin resistance and 
just really quickly, insulin resistance happens when cells stop responding to the hormone signal to take blood sugar in for energy. Now, if you're wondering, well, why does that happen? Well, there's a couple of reasons. People typically become insulin resistant, sometimes because of genetics. There are definitely genetics that are at play, but I would have to say that that's not the biggest reason. Hormone imbalances can be a reason as well. But often these factors are related to diet and lifestyle. So highly processed foods, a diet high in sugar, especially sugar in liquid form, can lead to cells kind of putting up a stranger danger signal and blocking insulin receptors or blocking insulin in general and also decreasing insulin receptor sites on the cell wall, which means that insulin is basically its signals being ignored, right? As a result, the pancreas thinks it needs to produce more insulin because it can't keep up with the demand. And all the while, we become more and more insulin resistant. Meanwhile, our blood sugar levels stay jacked up because the cells aren't taking in that sugar, right? And our liver stores become way too much and it sends that glucose, which is now glycogen, into fat cells. It, it turns it into triglycerides, it turns it into fat cells, leading to weight gain, even fatty liver disease. This is why insulin is also known, as I mentioned earlier, as a fat storage hormone because glycogen stored in the liver eventually turns to fat if we're not leveraging it. But unfortunately, sometimes people just aren't. This also leads to belly fat and visceral fat. And ultimately, it leads to inflammation. So if insulin is left unchecked or it's blocked by our cells, we start to create that visceral fat and that creates more inflammation as well. So that's how we kind of end up becoming pre-diabetic and then developing those type 2 diabetes along with obesity and cardiovascular disease, maybe even other chronic conditions down the line. Now, what I recommend, because it's always important to be looking at this, is to get your levels tested every single year. So I would love for you to be looking at your hemoglobin A1C from an inflammatory marker of insulin. Or if you can get a doctor to do this, run a fasting insulin test. And I recommend one of these at least once per year. If you do see your hemoglobin A1C heading above a 5.6, then I would then start recommending it to get it every at least two to three times a year and see what you can do to start dropping that hemoglobin A1C number under 5.5, ideally under 5.0 if you can. So research has linked high magnesium diets with a lower risk of type 2 diabetes. And in fact, type 2 diabetes is associated with magnesium deficiency according to the review published in the World Journal of Diabetes. So not getting enough magnesium through diet and also losing it through increased urination or symptoms of type 2 diabetes can contribute to lower levels of the mineral in the body, possibly leading to a worsening cycle of blood sugar issues. So basically what research has shown in the World Journal of Diabetes is that a deficiency in magnesium may worsen insulin resistance. So it's important to keep those magnesium levels at a good place so that we don't contribute to a worsening of that insulin resistance. Now, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial published in Diabetes and Metabolism found that magnesium supplementation improved insulin sensitivity in non-diabetic participants. So now that you have a little bit of a clear picture of the impact that magnesium has on blood sugar levels and that it can help support not only stabilize blood sugar levels across the board, but also create more insulin sensitivity, I think it's beginning to see how important this supplement can be for our overall metabolic health. I also want to shed light on how magnesium can improve sleep, which also in its own right helps to stabilize blood sugar levels. You know, there's a lot of different contributing factors when it comes to blood sugar. And I have so many episodes on how to drop blood sugar levels, how to manage blood sugar spikes. You know, walking is a big thing, especially right after a meal, taking magnesium, making sure that you're well supplemented. But sleeping is a major player here, reducing stress levels. All of these things are a major player. But sleep is probably one of the biggest indicators of a kind of a wonky blood sugar roller coaster because when we're not getting enough sleep, our bodies are just in a state of inflammation and it just throws everything off. And so that's why I really love that magnesium can do so many jobs at the same time. It's why, I, hence, I think it's one of the best tools that we can use as long as we're consistent with it. I think consistency when it comes to this particular mineral is so, so critical. So when it comes to sleep, magnesium being the amazing multitasker that it is, 
has its hand in many processes that affect sleep. For starters, it helps to regulate our circadian rhythm, which is the internal clock that tells the body when to be awake in the morning and when to go to bed. Magnesium also assists with the production of certain neurotransmitters that promotes relaxation and quiets nerve activity, most notably GABA. So it's an agonist of GABA pathways. Magnesium is thought to directly and positively impact relaxation and deep sleep. So it really helps to promote GABA and ensuring that we get that deep, deep restful sleep. Now, when combined with melatonin and zinc, nightly magnesium supplementation improved the sleep quality of 43 older people living in long-term care facilities in Italy in a 2011 clinical trial. Now, compared to the placebo group, those who took the supplement found it easier to fall asleep and wake up energized. Now, magnesium has also been shown in a 2002 EEG study to increase slow wave sleep, which is the deep sleep stage that is essential for memory consolidation and muscle repair. The same research found that magnesium may help regulate our HPA axis, quelling the energizing fight or flight stress response, which is really demonstrating that magnesium is a great, great chill pill. Uh, magnesium has also been shown to help quell anxiety and those really just panicky, overwhelm moments. Now, the other side effect benefits of magnesium is the role that it plays in vitamin D transportation and activation, which not only happens in the body, but it benefits kidney health, blood pressure balance, sleep, and immune support. I talk about this in great length in one of the podcast episodes that we did on vitamin D levels, because what's recommended is not only take vitamin D with K1 and K2, but also make sure that you're taking magnesium every single day to get all the benefits of vitamin D. Now, if you want to learn about how magnesium rescues hormones and energy, I got a whole episode on that. It's episode 241, and it's five ways magnesium rescues hormones and energy. But I felt like I get so many questions about what to take when it comes to blood sugar levels. I'm always thinking about, okay, well, what would be a supplement that would move the needle across the board, not just blood sugar, but how can we get other side benefits? This is the one, this is the go-to. So I want to talk about is how to optimize levels to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to metabolic function and sleep. Now, a great way to get started is to be eating more magnesium-rich foods. So I want to share my favorite sources of magnesium-rich foods that are also amazing hormone-loving foods. One, the first and best place to get magnesium from foods is going to be fiber-rich foods like green leafy vegetables, pumpkin seeds, black beans, almonds, avocado, broccoli, bananas, Brazil nuts, and cashews. Other sources are going to be fatty fish like salmon and lean protein from grass-fed beef and chicken. So those are going to be my favorite areas. Now I'm going to have my free hormone recipe guide that includes many of these magnesium boosting foods in the show notes for this episode. So be sure to go and grab it because you can begin to start implementing these recipes right now, not only will they help support your overall endocrine system, hormones like progesterone and estrogen and testosterone, but also it's phenomenal for helping to boost magnesium as well. Now, keep in mind that although I think food is a major player anytime it comes to healing the body, Most of us need a lot of magnesium to stay healthy. So changing your diet may just not be enough. I know it wasn't enough for me. So about 60% of people in the US don't consume an adequate amount of magnesium through nutrition alone, according to the research published in Physiological Reviews. Now, to put this magnesium deficiency in further perspective, we're talking about over 100 million adults in the U.S. failing to achieve the nutritional requirements they need to function daily. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a non-negotiable mineral for your cells. And a big problem is that not only are we processing out a lot of depleted minerals from our food, but another part of the problem is that magnesium in our bodies tend to naturally dip as we age, as early as in our 30s. And this has a lot to do with reduced intestinal absorption, reduced bone storage, and excess urinary loss. This makes maintaining healthy magnesium levels a lifelong endeavor for many of us. On the other side of the coin is lifestyle depletion. This is what I see a lot of us struggling with. When we are very busy, like most of us are, we burn through key nutrients. This is one of the biggest ones that we burn through because our cells are so dependent upon it. They're so reliant on it. 
So we burn through magnesium very, very fast. And so what you should be looking out for if you're finding that you may have a magnesium deficiency is one, feeling super irritable, restless and anxious, headaches and migraines, hypertension, muscle cramps or spasms, a lack of energy, even to the point of chronic fatigue, insomnia, trouble sleeping, or an inability to wind down, right? And gosh, you're looking at that list. I'm looking at that list. (laughs) I know I've had a lot of these issues in the past and, you know, a lot of it stemmed from nutrient deficiencies. You know, so often you think we're getting it from our green smoothies. We're getting it from our big salads. We're getting it from all the veggies that we're eating. And yet we're still burning through all of that on a day-to-day basis. Now, symptoms of magnesium deficiency may be subtle, but it's something that we need to be looking into. And if you're finding that you start to take more magnesium, that you feel better, then keep on taking it. In my opinion, supplementing with magnesium is one of the best ways to ensure that you have enough of this vital mineral because the decreased availability of magnesium in our food supply, soil, the chronic stress that depletes magnesium and other factors that contribute to nutrient deficiencies, taking supplements is the best way to keep your body on track. Honestly, for a lot of us, it's the only way to keep our body on track. So magnesium supplements, what I love about it, are relatively side effect free, aside from a laxative effect in some, if you take a little bit too much, for instance, too much magnesium oxide or too much magnesium citrate can lead to that laxative effect, which is amazing if you're dealing with constipation, I just say, go get it. So it's really, you know, it's one of the safest minerals that we can take. We rarely ever get to a level of a toxic dosage. And I think it's worth experimenting to kind of figure out what works best for your body so that you can find your balance again, right? So we're stabilizing those blood sugar levels. We're getting better sleep. We're feeling better. We're boosting that energy level. That's going to be all super critical here. Now, the number one magnesium that I recommend, well, is the one that I obviously formulated. It is magnesium glycinate with a little bit of magnesium oxide. The amino acid glycine has phenomenal sleep benefits of its own, and it's been shown to make it easy to fall asleep and stay asleep and reduce daytime sleepiness. It's also been shown to help support mood. It's also been shown to help boost energy levels, and it's very, very gentle with really no side effects whatsoever. And that's why I wanted to formulate a magnesium that really did the work that boosted your energy levels, that had you feeling amazing, and that was very gentle and also worked very quickly. So my Magnesium Restore, I think is the business, honestly. And it's a part of the Essentially Whole line. It's actually my number one best-selling supplement because it is such a big needle mover. Now, in regards to the amount that we need, women need upwards of 320 milligrams of magnesium daily and it's even higher if you're pregnant. Now, while you can really take a magnesium supplement at any time of the day, I I know you've probably listened to other episodes of mine, what I recommend, especially if you're taking it for a chill pill, you're taking it to relax, you're taking it to ease anxiousness and support mood, and to help just support low progesterone levels as well, I recommend taking it before going to bed. So I usually take it about an hour heading to bed, especially if you're struggling with sleep or you want to boost deep restorative sleep, I recommend taking it before bed. And if you're really, really struggling with sleep issues, I do suggest trying my sleep bundle, which includes Magnesium Restore and the Zen Sleep Supplements. Zen Sleep, oh my gosh, is amazing. It's specifically designed to help get you that deep restorative sleep and to help you fall asleep. It's made with melatonin, L-theanine, GABA, valerian, passion fruit, chamomile, I mean, it is all the things I've ever wanted in terms of minerals, herbs, amino acids, neurotransmitters, so that you are getting consistent deep sleep every single night. Now, the sleep bundle, which I have on sale for 10% off right now, I'm going to have the link in the show notes for you to go and check it out. It is called my sleep bundle. You can also find it in the Essentially Whole store. It's on sale there as well. If you just go to drmarisa.com slash shop. And I just want to say thank you so much for listening today to the Essentially You podcast. This show is all about providing tools to rock your hormones and feel amazing in your body. Now, if there is someone in your life that needs to hear this today, take a moment, screenshot, and shoot it on over via text message or share it on social media. And when you share the episode, don't forget to leave out hormone literacy as a hashtag or hormone CEO. Until the next episode, have an amazing day.